Hi, I'm Stephanie. Welcome to my channel. I'm glad to have you here. Today I'm going to be talking about tips for beginner witches that I hope you will find helpful. If you enjoy this video, please like it and I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe. Thank you. My first tip is to read everything you can and really do your research. There's so many aspects of paganism and witchcraft that it can be very overwhelming to try to learn about it all, especially all at once. So it can, it's helpful if you narrow it down, find something like one aspect you're interested in and start there. Personally, I think it's really best to start with the basics such as energy manipulation, visualization, forming intent, stuff like that, because you're not gonna be able to do the advanced or even the medium skill level stuff if you don't have the basics. So I think um, starting there is great. When you're researching, also really remember to read critically. Just because you find something in a book, online, wherever it is, doesn't mean that that's like, that that's hard facts, that that's 100% true all the time, or that that's the right, sorry, pencils, that that's the right way to do something. Um, everything out there, everything, whether, like I said, whether it's online, in a book, whatever, is just one person, or sometimes a group of people's, but it's just one person's way of doing it. So what might be right for them might not be right for you. In line with researching, my next tip is to keep some kind of journal. It doesn't need to be anything fancy and can just be a spiral notebook, a composition notebook, a word document, anything like that. It doesn't have to be fancy or in any specific order or anything. It's just basically to take notes as you're learning. Keep track of what you're learning, what you're doing and practicing, any questions you have, all that kind of stuff. This can be very helpful in the future. I think when you are taking notes, it's it's important to write down the source, where you got that information, whether it's a book or a YouTube video online, wherever. This is great because when you come back later and you see that, see like you might see like a snippet of information you wrote, but then you're like, okay, well, I wanna learn more about that. I wanna finish read, like I wanna read the rest of what was written where I just took notes on one specific part. It helps you find where you got that information. And of course, once you, if you do make a, like a fancy book of shadows or whatever, it doesn't have to be fancy, but like an official book of shadows where you order everything or whatever, it's helpful to be able to put, you know, who wrote this in there. Cause you don't just, you don't want to take credit for work that's not yours basically. And um, also when you have your notebook, it can be helpful to write the date that you're taking any notes so that, you, again, you look back, you know, okay, this, I wrote this on this day, or I was thinking about this this day. I, I did this tarot drawing on this specific date. I have a bunch of notebooks. This isn't actually one of them, but they're just spiral notebooks like this, just school notebooks. I have composition notebooks. I have a whole pile of them from over the years. And a lot of them, well, all of them really don't have like specific dates in them. Some of them will say like started, you know, 2015 or whatever. But then sometimes I'll move from one notebook to another to another instead of keeping all the notes chronologically in one at one time. So I never know looking back at them if, you know, like, when did I write this? Did, did I even, did I practice this? This thing I did, was it in, in 2015 when I started the notebook or was it in 2018? You know, I didn't even write when I ended a lot of the notebooks. And some of them just say book one, book two on the covers. You know, like that's the first book I started with, the second book, whatever. They don't have dates whatsoever. So now when I take notes, I really try to write the date. One other thing is you don't want to put huge unrealistic expectations on yourself. Witchcraft is a path of constant learning and growth. And it's not something you're going to master in a month, a year, even five years. It's a lifelong journey. And you'll always be learning. Honestly, I don't think it's something you ever 100% master um, it cause, because you're always learning, you know? And so for me personally, I've been officially been a witch in pagans for 22 years since I was nine years old. 
And in a lot of ways, I still consider myself a beginner. There's a lot of practices I just either haven't dived into or even ones I've been doing for a long time, but I don't think, I don't, I definitely don't think I'm any kind of expert. I have things to share, things I'd like to, like to be able to share, hence, you know, the YouTube channel, but I'm definitely not an expert. So I think, sorry, I think over time and practice, you do get to become more adept, but it's good not to put big unrealistic expectations on yourself, you know, just in general, not just about be thinking you're going to become an expert, but even on smaller things like don't try to say, oh, I'm going to make a book of shadows and it's going to be perfect, you know, because it's not this. We're humans. Life isn't perfect and neither is anything else we create. Um, I see a lot of people online making like beautiful book of shadows and they, they are, they're amazing. But, you know, some people like myself, I'm, I'm artsy, yes, but I can't draw. I have horrible handwriting. That, that, so that's just not something that's ever going to happen for me in the same way that it might for someone else. And that's okay. So I try not to put those big unrealistic expectations on myself. Kind of related to that last one is don't take yourself too seriously. We're all human. We all make mistakes. If you're doing a spell or ritual, for example, and you stumble on your words or like you fart or burp or whatever, or even just like, oh, I'm in the middle of a ritual. I need to light a candle. Oh, I don't have my lighter. Whatever. You know, it's okay. Your ritual spell, whatever you're doing, it's not ruined. Like I say, we're all humans. We all make mistakes. Learn to laugh and just kind of roll with it. This one's important. Learn to spot the differences between what's real and what's not. There's a lot of stuff put out there, especially on the internet, by people who don't know what they're doing or don't know what they're talking about or both. Some things that people put out are like, for example, spells that haven't been tested. So they don't know that they work, but they put them out there as if they, do, they know that they work and you can use them anyway. So there's some stuff like that where it's just like it just hasn't been tested or there's also but there's also stuff where it's just flat out bullshit that can't possibly work. It's not like, oh, it might work for one person, but not another. It's stuff that can't work because it goes against the laws of nature. Witchcraft and magic isn't some supernatural, charmed, Harry Potter, you know, TV movie, whatever stuff. It has to work within the laws of our world. So some things that you'll find are easier to spot. You'll know easier that, you know, that's clearly not real. Like, for example, a spell claiming to turn someone into a werewolf. Or even like, even like a spell claiming to turn, like obviously werewolves aren't real. But like even a spell claiming to like change your hair color. You know, that that's not scientifically possible without like dyeing your hair or something. It's not naturally just... You're not going to do a spell and just naturally changes color. So stuff like that is a little easier to spot. But um, I'm sorry if I look like I'm shivering. It's cold in here. <laughs> but um, so some stuff like that is easier to spot. But some things on the surface might seem, oh, you know, okay, that'll work. But they take a little bit more critical thinking to really think about it and realize, oh, okay, you know, that's not going to work. An example of this is I've seen people talking about traffic light changing spells, you know, change a light from red to green. This isn't something that's actually going to work because the reason for it is, again, because you have to work within the laws of nature. Witchcraft doesn't go against science. Like I said, it's not supernatural. It's, I think it's just, it really is just natural and science that hasn't been explained yet. And so... With the traffic light changing spell, traffic lights work one of two ways, at least in the US. I really don't know, you know, I mean, I don't know other countries, but I would assume it's pretty much the same everywhere, the general way they work. Either they are on a timer or they work when your car pulls up to the light, they sense the motion and they will turn green. So if it's on a timer, think about it. How are you gonna, how, what would it take to change that light from green to red. It takes time, right? You have to wait. Otherwise, to just magically change it, you would have to somehow manipulate time itself, which just isn't possible. 
You cannot speed up time. It's just not possible, you know? So that doesn't work. It's not real. So some things like that, they do take more critical thinking to figure out what's real and what's not. And over time, through reading and researching, you will get better at figuring that kind of stuff out. I hear a lot of people say intention is everything. And some people might disagree with me on this, but while I think intention is very important and it's probably maybe 80%, I don't know, 80% of a spell's importance, I don't think it's everything. I think it is totally possible to do a spell using nothing but your intention. I think though that that takes a lot of energy, a lot of power, and in general, it's just harder to do especially if you're a beginner. Like I say though, it is definitely not impossible, especially if you do it like when you're very emotional, I think that's easier, but just in general, I do think it's harder. So I think tools and ingredients can be important to spell work because they help focus your energy and your intention and can also bring in their own magical properties to help enhance and empower your spell. My next tip is to create your own correspondences rather than just going by what a book or website says. Every list you find, no matter where you find it, is just someone's own personal correspondences that they came up with. Just because some things are more widely, widely known or accepted in the community doesn't make them right, you know? Just because it's right for one person doesn't mean it's right for another. When you're doing a spell and you're using correspondences that you found, if they don't ring true to you personally, or, e or especially if they just flat out don't make sense, but you use them anyway, the spell has a much higher chance of not working. I think you have to really understand and connect with what you're using in order for it to work. So when it comes to correspondences, I find it, and creating your own, I find it easiest to start with colors. Colors, you don't have to buy anything to create your own correspondences. Unlike herbs or crystals or something where you'd have to buy them or have access to them in order to, you know, spend time with them and get to know them to create your correspondences. Colors are everywhere. If you, if you can't, like you can just literally just like, I could just, hang on. I can just pick up this hairbrush, blue. What does blue mean to me? You know? So you can experience colors very easily. And if you, if there's a certain color you're trying to find a correspondence for and you just, you can't visualize it or whatever, Google, you know, just literally look up turquoise color sample, whatever, you know? Turquoise paint chip even, something like that. Cat fur. <laughs> go to images and you can you can look at all these different colors. So it's easiest for colors because of that. So to create your own correspondences, just spend time with that thing. Whether, it, like I said, it's a color, an herb, a crystal, whatever it is. Spend time with it. Think about it. Think, when I see this, when I feel this, when I experience this, let's just go again with colors. What does this mean to me personally? A lot of people, for example, might see red and what's commonly kind of known for red is like love, you know, but maybe someone looks at red and they think, okay, red, like blood. So I would use red for healing then. Or you might think of red as being anger and passion, like um, something. So you might use it for something like that. Number nine is to get creative. While I did say intention isn't everything, that doesn't mean you need to go out and buy a bunch of tools and ingredients and things right away, or even really at all. Most people, when you look around your house, will have plenty of items you can repurpose. Different, not, not just repurposing, but also just using from your house, such as herbs and things. So if you just change your way of thinking and seeing things, look around your house and say, you know, what can I use that I already have? I am actually going to be doing a video coming up on budget witchcraft. And in there, I'm gonna have a bunch of examples of different things, including 
things you already have at home that you can repurpose or use. I said in number one, it is good to read and research. However, I think it's important to be more than just a book witch. It's important to explore and experience and practice things yourself. Actually get the experience, you know? I think as a beginner, it's best to start slow, like I said before. You know, start with stuff like grounding, energy manipulation, meditation, things like that before you try to jump into the real extreme stuff that's going to be harder without knowing the basics. Also, in regards to this though, and in practicing and stuff, I think it is important to do your research on safety. There's a lot of things out there that um, are witchy, witchcraft adjacent, you know, kind of incorporated into witchcraft that can be flat out dangerous if you're not doing it and practicing safely, if you, if you just don't know what you're doing. Things like herbs, you can easily get real sick, overdose, they can interact with medications. Also some things that people might not think about like essential oils, they aren't safe around babies, pets, small children. I know, I'm not an expert, but like, for example, I know peppermint essential oil is not safe for children under seven years old. You don't ever want to use any of that kind of stuff around pets. Um, like cats, I know they're, what is it? Is it the liver or the kidney? I get those two confused, but whichever one it is that like filters out toxins, ours can filter, can filter the essential oils out, but theirs cannot. So they will build up in their system until they get real sick. And then often by the times they're showing severe signs and you figure out that's what the problem is, it's too late and you can't save them. So this also goes for things like incense and scented candles. They're not safe around, you know, babies and pets and stuff. So just be sure to really research stuff like that that could be potentially dangerous before you start using and practicing with it. Remember that magic won't work without the mundane work to go along with it. Magic is a tool to help aid our mundane efforts and is like a little extra boost. If you're not gonna actually do the mundane work, doing a spell isn't really gonna do anything for you. One example I like to use for this, although it can be applied to pretty much everything, is looking for a job. If you do a spell to get a job, but then you just sit on the couch and watch TV all day, a job's not just gonna fall on your lap, right? You've gotta get out there. You've gotta do job interviews. You've gotta do your resumes. You've gotta do all this stuff that comes along with actually finding a job. So always remember that magic is really to aid the mundane, but I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions or would even like me to do a part two, let me know down below. I wanna thank you so much for watching and I'd appreciate it again if you'd subscribe. If you want to be notified every time I upload a new video, hit the bell icon. I will be trying to upload more, much more regularly now. Thank you so much for watching and have a blessed day.